Both times we've seen the superheroes deck come out on top here. Do you expect the three peat? I don't know. I think I mean Dylan Hand's a really strong player. Clay Spickemeyer, obviously, no slouch. Grand Prix champion, uh, uh, cha uh, you know, Open champion I, at the very least in the the team portions of the team standard opens or sorry the the team constructed opens rather. So both players here uh, quite accomplished here on the SCG tour and in Magic in general. I think it's a close matchup and one that's just going to depend on how well either player knows the specifics. An important thing that we've seen on the Esper side of things was early hero of Precinct 1s. Now there's a miss for that for Spicklemeyer. Yeah, and those would usually uh, protect the um, Planeswalker, the, the Teferi Time Raveler on turn 3, while also bouncing the Llanowar Elves. Hand is going to continue ramping up his mana. He had a Llanowar Elf that was hit by Othakaya, currently with two Paradise Druids and three lands. Yeah, notably, Hand not attacking with a Paradise Druid, understanding that uh, it's more important that he uh, keeps the uh, Hexproof active for as long as possible. Spicklemeyer continues to make land drops. There's Teferi Time Raveler that goes up to five. On Hand's turn, he does have that Nissa, pretty much the hallmark card of the deck, even though we call it Mass Manipulation. Nissa really is the glue. Yeah, Nissa is, is quite strong in the deck. Um, gives you double the mana on all the uh, forests you tap for, basically, while also providing you a lot of pressure by continually turning your lands into 3-3s three and attacking those opponent opposing Planeswalkers or just pressuring your opponent's life total. So that forest attack to ferry down to 2. It is kind of interesting there, though. A hand turned that forest into a creature at no fourth land drop, so a lot of his mana is tied up in creatures currently. Yeah, but fortunately for him, the... Uh, Esper superheroes decks don't play stuff like Kaya's Wrath in the main deck, which means that these creatures are, for the most part, safe unless Spickmar just has a ton of these one-for-one -one removal spells. So Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, pushed that Nissa off for a couple turns, Hand cleared the Planeswalkers of the attacks, and now is casting Shalai Voice of Plenty. Yeah, and this should protect uh, the rest of his creatures quite well, though it looks like Spickmar might have uh, uh, a couple of answers here. A bounce on the Shly Voice of Plenty, and then Thought Erasure here to take away Dylan's best card. But since he's been missing land drops, his hand is just stacked. Two Teferi uh, Time Ravelers, that's Shalai, Entrancing Melody, and Mass Manipulation. And once again, we see the Esper Superhero deck casting a Thought Erasure when they're super far behind on board. Takes the Shalai. That one most immediately applies the most pressure, so that makes sense. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dylan just play Time Raveler, uh, kill the opposing Time Raveler, and swing in for five points of damage. But decides to leave back the Paradise Druids to give himself access to more mana next turn in the face of removal. We've seen Oath of Kaya trigger a number of times as Hand attacks out of these Planeswalkers. You saw a flash of a 31 for Spicklemeyer's life total. It's high. It Hand's at 12 off high. of just Oath of Kaya triggers. If I'm pretty sure Dylan's going to win this game, and it doesn't matter just how high Spicklemeyer's life total is, because he's just going to complete, like, just chunk them harder and harder over the next few turns. Yeah, as you mentioned, the Superheroes deck has the Kaya's Wraths in the sideboard, so it's really tough to recover from here. Hand just draws a card with Teferi. The Nissa pretty well cleaned things up. Clay Spicklemeyer is going to pack it up. Dylan Hand up a game. Yeah, I mean, you saw uh, in a previous round just how good Hero was in game one at protecting your own Planeswalkers. If Spicklemeyer had led with a turn to Hero Precinct 1 in that match, he could have potentially protected those Planeswalkers with the 1-1s one -one generated every single turn. All right, so we've seen a couple different things happen with sideboards. Spicklemeyer is reaching for a number of cards. You can check out the sideboards using the Cardboard Live extension on your screens at home. Uh, so there's a lot of cards here. Spicklemeyer's sideboard, two Cry of the Carnarium, two Duress, two Kaya's Wrath, three Lyra Dawnbringer, two Elder Spells, two Nightfell Predators, and two Dovin's Veto. What are you expecting to see? Um, I'm not sure if this is exactly the same as Ben Freeman's list, but at the very least it's extremely close. And uh, I think that wh what you really need to look at is, is how does Spickmeyer want to approach the matchup? I have suggested that perhaps they should go a lot more controlling, bring in the Kaiseras and the Cry of the Carnariums, the Duresses and the Dovin's Vetoes and the Elder Spells, board out most of the creatures. I think Belhan is particularly bad. And uh, unless you draw multiple of them, I think Hero Precinct 1 just doesn't have big enough impact on the games. Uh, and especially if you want to use Cry of the Carnarium and Kai's Wrath to contain those mana creatures. 
Um, if he does decide to do that, I, I would board him, you know, roughly two, four, six, eight, ten cards, and then you board out the eight creatures, and then maybe uh, maybe a couple of spot removal spells or something, just because you're bringing in so many sweepers. Sure. Hand sideboard, four negate, four thrashing Brontodon, three Thorn Lieutenant, Rivers Rebuke, two Lyra Dawnbringers of his own, and a Tulsmer Friend of Wolves. I think you just want to continue being the beatdown deck because you expect your opponent to, to go more towards control. They're a little bit better at being a control deck than you, so you don't want to try to steal that role from them. Um, I think you just go hard on the negates to contain the sweeper effects uh, as well as the big planeswalkers that they could play, uh, as well as the uh, couple of Command the Dreadhorde they have at the top end. Uh, try to make sure that your creatures can pressure an opposing uh, Teferi Time Raveler so that your negates are turned on. Um, but your creatures aren't very good. I don't really like Lear Dawnbringer. I don't really like River's Rebuke. And the Tulsimir Friend of Wolves is more for the uh, uh, beating the aggro matchups than anything. Sure. Makes sense. Both players go into six here. Taking a look at those mulligan hands now. See if that is where they keep. Looks like they both will. Both scry to the bottom. Watery Grave tapped for Spicklemeyer. Temple Garden for hand. And now Spicklemeyer has the turn two hero. No mana acceleration for hand just yet, just a tap breeding pool. He'll be attacked down to 18 by the hero. Looks like yeah. there's a Dovin's Veto in Clay's hand, but he'll cast Thought Erasure, make a token. Now, these are the spots where Thought Erasure is quite good, right? It, uh, when you're ahead or at parity on the battlefield, discard spells are awesome because they allow you to dictate the pace of the game. When you're behind, discard spells start to look a lot worse because uh, you're playing a card that doesn't really impact the battlefield in any meaningful way. Yeah, so it grabs a Shalai. Here's a very Time Raveler for hand. He goes ahead and bounces the hero and draws. Yeah, and here you're seeing that 1-1 one, one play a big role because it gives Spicklemeyer a way to check the Teferi Time Raveler uh, while also uh, providing defense in other spots for the uh, uh, your own Planeswalkers. And so Hand found a fourth land, plays that, Krasis for two on his fourth turn, draws a card, and he does still have a backup Krasis we saw on the Hand. So things shaping up for him as we see Duress from Spicklemeyer, another look, Paradise Druid, that second Krasis, Nissa, and Mass Manipulation. Yeah, I think Spicklemeyer kind of want, wants to walk the dog on the following turn, so to speak. I think you take mass manipulation, hope that your opponent taps out for uh, Nessu Shakes the World, and then you get to use your turn to cast Dovin's Veto. In this scenario, um, he's going to go for a bit more of aggressive play, though. He's going to attack trade heroes and then go Narset. This play is also fine, and uh, you know he loses a little bit of value out of Dovin's Veto, making the token, but he doesn't really have to worry about um, mass manipulation for quite a few turns still. Yeah, and uh, Narset ended up taking it's very Time Raveler. We see Han just plays Breeding Pool and Paradise Druid. So no harm, no foul on the Dovin's Veto so far. Narset's going to find the Elder Spell with its second activation. And here, uh, Spickamar can actually play Teferi, Tick Up, uh, hold back a blocker, and still has Dovin's Veto at the ready. But unfortunately for him, uh, Dylan's just going to play a large Hydro Crisis more than likely because it gets around Dovin's Veto. Little bit awkward against the Narset. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's just a 5-5 five, five flyer. It uh, doesn't draw cards, but, you know, he has to figure out a way to apply pressure. Ooh, I like this play, actually. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so he went for mass manipulation on the Teferi. That got hit by Dovin's Veto. Yeah, unfortunately for him, Spickmeyer still has uh, another Dovin's Veto in hand. He plays a fresh Narset. That one's going to find Teferi Hero of Dominaria. And there's a backup Dovin's Veto in his hand yet as well. Time Raveler. Thinking about going up to six. Actually just goes down to two to draw a card. No bounce. We'll see what Dylan Hand can do about it. We know that he's had that Hydroid Crisis in hand. I kind of like the Teferi ticking up because you know that there's a Hydro Crisis on the other side, and you know that if he casts it, you can just basically bounce it for free. Paradise Druid tries to attack something. It'll trade with a token. Now here's a Crisis for four. I guess with uh, a, a Hero of Dominaria in hand, you can just play it in minus, so it's not a huge deal. You also just find a removal spell off of the uh, Narsa as well. Narset finds Cryo the Carnarium a little bit shy against a 4-4. Awesome 
Yeah, now Clay's gonna have to basically tap out in order to deal with this crisis. He's probably gonna, well, he's gonna decide to plus instead of minusing. That's interesting. Unless he finds a remove spell, there's a chance that the uh, crisis is able to knock off one of these planeswalkers. Yeah. And there you do see an attack. Time Raveler goes down. Glacial Fortress at the land for turn. We'll go to Clay Spicklemeyer. So no real follow-up, but he's starting to work on some of the planeswalkers. Yeah, with Narsa on the battlefield, Teferi Time Raveler drawn for turn. I would probably just lean on casting that, bouncing the Hydro Crisis, forcing Dylan to continually cast this Hydro Crisis for effectively no value, thanks to that Narsa on the battlefield. So there's a Time Raveler. Hand will cast Negate. Yeah, but this one's pretty easily dealt with by your own Dovin's Veto. If you cared. Yeah, looks like he doesn't care. Can just minus on it if he wants. That gets rid of the pressure. Dylan with no cards in hand. Spicklemeyer with a Negate. Or sorry, Doe's Veto at the ready. All right, so hand was empty-handed. Draws and casts Thorn Lieutenant. Well, it's not bad when you have a lot of mana, but yeah. please Spicklemeyer finds the right answer. Also good against that Cry of the Carnarian with that three toughness, but not Kaya's Wrath as that takes care of the two three. Yeah, Spicklemeyer just super far ahead. It's, it's hard to get out from under uh, all those Planeswalkers when you don't have any real board position. Spickelmeyer there just uh, showcasing the strength of those uh, sideboard wrath effects and uh, just how good those planeswalkers can be. Interesting to note, he's gone kind of the hybridized version of my sideboard plan where instead of boarding out the Hero Precinct 1, he actually has just boarded out a couple of other things, likely um, the Basilica Bell Haunts, maybe a few other uh, spot removal spells in favor of those sweeper effects. Uh, but still has the Hero Precinct 1 because he can leverage those at specific times either early or late, depending on his hand. And he can kind of like play around his own sweeper effects if he needs to. Yeah, the sideboarding has been pretty interesting. We've seen a lot of different cards in the post-sideboard games and a lot of games where different spells you have are going to be better or worse. You know, in that game, Spicklemeyer had a Cry of the Carnarium and an Elder Spell for some time. It didn't really do anything, but they will be good sometimes. You know, your Narset does give you high access to what might be good in that spot. Right, and it's important to have bases covered. At most spots there, Spicklemeyer had basically anything that Dylan could draw checked. And that's because he was so far ahead from the multiple Narset activations over two Narsets. He had uh, Hero of Dominaria going, multiple bounces uh, with uh, Time Raveler, and just always had cards in hand, whereas Dylan Hand was just super low on resources most of the game. And if the matchup plays out in a way where you're generally up on cards, you can afford to have a number of them be situational. It looks like Spicklemeyer keeps on seven, but Hand will be mulliganing this game. This might just be another, yet another match uh, between Esper Superheroes and Mass Manipulation where we see Manipulation really dominate in the first game with the Nisu Shakes the World, but then the Esper Superheroes decks just get so many tools out of the sideboard that really put a stranglehold on these Manipulation decks' as mana. So hand kept on six, try to the bottom, starts off with Island and Glacial Fortress. Spicklemeyer, Watery Grave and the Glacial Fortress of his own, and Thought Erasure. Takes a look at the hand of Tulsimer, Krasis, Double Anwar Elf, and Thorn Lieutenant, all uncastable. No green mana yet for hand. Yeah, pretty uh, ambitious keep, but one that I may have done so as well, just because uh, all you need is find green mana, and your deck is pretty flush with it. Well, hey, Hinterland Harbor off the top. Krasis was taken by the Erasure, and here's Thorn Lieutenant. I like playing Thorn Lieutenant over Elf because if your opponent leads with Teferi Time Raveler, they can't really afford to bounce your Thorn Lieutenant, or else you just get to attack it down with the 1-1 one -one token. Spicklemeyer's turn three is Narset. He'll find another nice Narset. Dig through time for dig through time. Narset finding nice set. <laughs> Now, it's, it's not going to be as good as Dig Through Time. It's just going to soak two damage here from the Thorn Lieutenant. Um, yeah, Narset down to one loyalty, and Land of War Elf is the follow-up. No fourth land, though. So we know Hand's hand is mostly just green stuff. Here's that backup Narset. And we'll see what Spicklemeyer wants to do with that. He's going to put it to three. It's possible this Pikamar is actually a, a bit light on mana. Oh, I'm wrong. Plays Hollowed Fountain, and he found a third Narset. It's not nearly as good when your opponent is tacking down and taking away those minus abilities, though. You're kind of just treading water, spinning mana to force your opponent to turn a creature sideways for a turn. 
All right, so Narset was attacked down to one by the Thorn Lieutenant, and there's a land, and that was Tulsimur, but Kaya's Wrath cleans it all up. Two land of War Elves for hands. He tries to recover. Yeah, these. Uh, this is not the spot you want to be drawing land of War Elves. That's, that's the problem. Thinking about going up to six. Actually, just goes down. Right, well, here's Command oh, the Dread Horde. There's uh, a yeah, yeah. Hand is not <laughs> interested in playing <laughs> through that. that Hydra Whoa. Crisis in hand. Yeah, from 20 life, you just swept up. What it was a Tulsimer that was gonna fight down one of those land of War Elves. Uh, Thorn Lieutenant, get back a Narset. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. We saw uh, almost every sideboard game where we have the Esper decks facing off against the Manipulation decks. The Esper decks just feel like they have so many more tools at their disposal that are potent in the matchup. You know, the Ram decks are reliant on having excess mana in their early turns. That leaves them vulnerable to some sweeper effects.